Let's return to the idea of a cost model for file organization access, and let's add B plus trees into our analysis. You'll recall the cost of operations for heap files and sorted files, and we sort of promised earlier that if we introduced indexes, we would have an even more attractive alternative. So let's see if we actually did better. We'll look at a clustered index, which is going to be the index that's going to give us the best performance, so this will be an optimistic assessment. We'll start with the simplest case, which is to scan all records. All right, here's a picture of our clustered B plus tree at the bottom. There's an index, which is triangle shaped, and there's a heap file, which the index points to. And since it's clustered, all those pointers are laid out in a nice uh, order like that. Data is stored by reference, alternative two. Um, and because it's a clustered uh, index, we're going to make the assumption that the uh, heap file is two thirds full. So every heap file page is only two thirds full to account for maybe future insertions. All right. The fan out of the B plus tree is going to be large. It's F. Why large? Well, first of all, we've got big pages, as we discussed. Second of all, at the leaf level, it's key pointer pairs, so we're not even storing full tuples. And in our analysis, we'll assume a static index for the moment. Now, to scan all the records, do we actually even need the index? Not with an alternative to by reference index. With a clustered index, which is by reference, we don't need to use the index to scan all the records. We simply scan the associated heap file. So scanning that heap file is just the same as scanning a heap file without an index, with the exception that we have made an assumption that we'll keep these pages only two thirds full. And in our previous analysis, we assumed the pages were totally full. So the cost here is 1.5 BD, rather than what it was before, BD for heap scan, because it takes three halves as many pages to store the same data when the pages are only two thirds full. Okay, so now we've got that cost in our table, and so far our indexes are not helping. They're actually making us slower for their first task, which is scanning all records. To account for the cost of a quality search, we're going to introduce two new variables, F, the internal node fanout, and E, the number of data entries per leaf, which you can think of if you like as the leaf level fanout. So to find the record with key three, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna search the index, and then we're going to walk to the heap file to go get the data item. Searching the index should be something logarithmic, but let's look at the specific cost here down to the last I.O. It's going to be log based F, because the internal fanout is F, of what? Of the number of leaf pages. All right, The number of leaf pages is going to be the total number of records, BR, divided by E, the number of records per leaf. So the number of leaf pages is BR over E, and log based F is going to be over that. But we have to be careful, there's an off by one thing here where we have to add one to this expression just to catch the cost of accessing the root. So to think about this, think about a tree where fanout is four and we've got 16 leaf nodes. That means we have a root, we have four internal nodes, and we have 16 leaf nodes. And clearly the cost to walk down that thing is three, the root, the intermediate level, and the leaf. But log base four of 16 is two. So we add one to account for that extra off by one and that gives us a cost of three. So the search of the index in all cases here will be log based F, BR over E plus one, and of course times D, which is the cost of an IO. Once we get down to the bottom of the index, then we have to go look up the record in the heap file, and that's another IO, which is one D. And recall that what's in the leaf level of this index is a record ID, which is a page and a slot number. And so that helps us figure out what page to go to. We access it directly in a single IO. So uh, updating our table, we can see here the cost of a quality search over on the right, and it's quite a bit nicer than the cost of the sorted file because the logarithm is now base F, which is a fairly big number, rather than base two. And so we can see we got the win we were looking for. So now let's go ahead and look at range search. We're gonna find the keys between three and seven. Again, we're gonna search the index walking from root to leaf. That's log base F, BR over E plus one times D. And then when we get to the leaf level, we're gonna scan the leaf level of the index and look up each matching record in the heap file by record ID. And it's gonna look a little bit like this because remember we have a clustered index. So the heap file is pretty much in the order of the leaf level, which means as we follow pointers out of the leaf level, we will mostly be looking at pages that are sequential in the heap file. Now the heap file, as we said, was two thirds full. So the heap file access is going to be three halves times the number of pages uh, for what we looked at in the sorted file. So that's going to be three halves times the number of pages times D. And then scanning the leaf level of the index is the last thing to account for. It's similar to the heap file access. It's probably less, 
but we'll make a worst case assumption here. We'll say that it's three halves times pages times D again, so that the total cost of scanning both the leaf level and the heap file, we will account for as three times pages times D. And when we add that all that up, we've got our log based FBR over E plus one to walk down the tree plus three times pages. And then that's the number of IOs, which we multiply by D for the cost. Now insertion is not something we'll bother illustrating. We're basically going to walk down to the bottom of the tree and insert the data into the heap file and insert a pointer to the heap file in the leaf level of the index. In principle, that insert into the leaf level could cause splits and so on, but we'll assume the simple case where the uh, leaf does not split and we just do an insert there. So the cost here is going to be log base F BR over E plus four times D. Now why four? And we'll get the same thing for delete, by the way. But where does the four come from? Let's be careful to account for that. We know that one of those four is that uh, off by one we discussed when we walk from the top of the tree. So log base FBR over E plus one just accounts for walking to the bottom of the tree. Then we need one more IO, just like in a quality search, to go fetch the item, or rather fetch the page that is to be inserted on or deleted from. So that's log BR over E plus two. And then we have to do a write both of the heap file page and of that leaf in the index. So that's two more IOs to do our writes. And so that's a total of four extra IOs, one for the accounting for the off by one, one to fetch the heap file page, and then two to write the heap file and index pages. Now, if we abstract away the details and we just look at the big O notation, in terms of the size of the file, how does this thing grow asymptotically? You'll see that B plus trees actually do quite nicely. Uh, asymptotically, they seem to be the most attractive choice here. It's in the constant factors where we have to be a little bit careful. Let's look at an example. Assume that you can do 100 sequential IOs in the time of one random IO. B plus trees in general are going to cost a lot of sequential IOs, so it could be pretty risky. For a particular lookup, is a B plus tree better than a full table scan of a heap file? Well, that B plus tree had better be very selective in the pages that it looks at you'd better visit less than 1% of the pages to make up for that 100x cost for random IO. Alternatively, you can make sure that your B plus tree also does sequential IO. And most of the IOs obviously in the B plus tree are at the leaf level as you're scanning through a range. So if you can arrange for your leaf level of your B plus tree and the things it fetches, namely the heap file it fetches from, to also be sequential IO, well then you can take a lot more IOs with your B plus tree. And this will be true with a clustered index and definitely not true with an unclustered index. The third alternative here is to make random IOs much less expensive and SSDs can help with that, particularly for read only workloads or read mostly workloads. So SSDs actually uh, can make indexes look quite a bit more attractive than magnetic disks, even for somewhat less selective queries.